Santa Claus is loved and recognized the world over as a symbol of Christmas. But as we grow up, most people stop believing in Santa's ability to affect our lives. After what happened in Queensland, Australia on Christmas Day in 1993, all the members of one family will never be too old to believe. Much of the footage was taped as the events unfolded on that December 25th. It was a really nice day, Christmas Day. Um, a lot of people were on the beach, you know, thousands of people. Water is dangerous, so uh, we do a surf patrols up and down the Gold Coast. Alan Johnston was out on the water that day with his three sons. Christmas morning we usually get up and open up our presents and, and uh, then we're trying to kill a little bit of time between then and lunch. We thought, well, that would be an ideal opportunity to um, shoot a few more waves with, with the jet ski. 18-year-old Nat took over the ski while his youngest brother, Garen, watched. We were having lots of fun. And my brother, Nat, got on and um, Nat is a show-off. <laughs> I said to Nat, I said, away you go, mate, have a good time and just take it steady. There's no way you can think that anything on such a perfect day could go wrong. enjoyed the, the thrill of the jet ski. He got a little bit bored with the mundane part of it and he decided to go up where the waves are a little bit bigger. The jet ski came through the set and no Nathan. And then we noticed he was floating face down in the water. We thought they just fell off and was going to get back on, but he wasn't moving. As soon as we realised that Nathan was in trouble, I immediately put out a Mayday call. I told them that we needed all assistance possible. I heard Travis screaming into Nat, saying to wake up, wake up. I was really scared because I knew that he was knocked unconscious. I looked up and I saw the helicopter coming along with, with Santa Claus dangling in midair. It was like someone above was looking at us on Christmas Day. It was just, it was an absolute miracle. It was a fluke. Westpac life-saving helicopter crewman Steve Leahy had heard Alan's mayday. I monitored a call over the air sea rescue frequency that there appeared to be a jet ski rider in the water and possibly drowning. celebrate Christmas, lifeguard Terry Gachi was on patrol 30 feet beneath the helicopter. There was no, no time to land on the beach and disconnect, so we ended up putting me straight into the water in the, in the Santa Claus suit. Travis was absolutely screaming to try to wake him up. All that I could see was Nathan was just foaming at the mouth. I managed to drag him straight into the boat and um, his face was dead. I just pulled a dead son into the boat. A split second later, Santa Claus came in behind me and he started to work on that to resuscitate him. So get in the shore as quickly as you can. Right. One minute I was, I was waving to people along the beach, and then the next minute I had a drowning patient beside me. I didn't know if he was alive or dead, so I immediately rolled him on his side into a recovery-type position and cleaned his airway up. I kept on asking um, what was going on, was he alive, what was happening? It was just cutting at the heart. 
When the patient was rolled over and started to breathe, it was a, a huge relief, but it was uh, a, a gurgle type of breathing. And uh, knowing that there is a lot of water sitting on their lungs, it's rather scary to hear somebody breathing like that. I had no idea on how long he'd been underneath the water for. The main problem I, I saw was going to be brain damage, some type of brain damage. Queensland Ambulance Officer Mark London happened to be assigned to the Gold Coast Water Police boat that day. And we noticed a boat quickly going past us the other way and a man who appeared to be in some sort of red suit kneeled down over someone laying in the back of the boat. We had the initial call as being someone who had come off a jet ski and we assumed that they uh, possibly had hit their head. The first thing I saw was a man in a Santa Claus uniform, but obviously the first concern was the patient. He was very pale, he was lifeless. He had a lot of difficulty in breathing. Obviously there was a lot of fluid on his lungs, a lot of fluid in his airway. He was constantly vomiting up seawater. Uh, he looked in a very serious condition. It was like a godsend that somebody who was more qualified than I was was actually there to help. These guys were just working unbelievable efforts. They must have worked for maybe 10 minutes, maybe maybe even longer, maybe 15 minutes, because he, he just wasn't wasn't with us. He was breathing, but I knew he still wasn't out of the woods for the fact that he still had the fluid on his lungs. It was still a major concern to me to see what the outcome was going to be and, and if he was actually going to be OK. As the ambulance pulled away, my heart, it was still full of hope, but gee, I was scared, I was scared inside. I just didn't know how, how he would be. Nathan was taken to Gold Coast Hospital, where he was examined by Dr. Mark Elcock. He was in a critical condition, and that he needed advanced life support um, to maintain his airway and to maintain his ventilation. Without that, um, he wouldn't have survived very long at all. We weren't given a real lot of hope as far as what his recovery rate might be. They didn't alarm us, but by the same token, they didn't lead us down the garden path either. Surprisingly, 18-year-old Nathan Johnston responded quickly and was released from the hospital the next day. Although he is eventually expected to fully recover, nine months later, he is still regaining his strength. I don't think I could describe how lucky I feel. Uh, you look at life a totally different way. You uh, try and take every opportunity you can get. Because once it's gone, it's gone. We raise our glasses and thanks very much, Terry. We were just the ones that were basically flying over and happened to stumble across him. I think there was an angel on my shoulder that day. But if it wasn't for the efforts of, of his family in the water and on that boat that day, he more than likely would have drowned. Give us some rescue, Joe. Terry was just, just unbelievable, you know. And this guy does this every weekend. So you just go out in all sorts of seas, for, you know, it's just unbelievable. Thanks, mate. Thanks doesn't seem enough. If you do lose consciousness, as the patient did in this scenario, then uh, you can sink straight to the bottom. You haven't got something to keep you afloat. The fact that the patient was wearing a life jacket is uh, what's probably ultimately saved his life. <laughs> All children should believe in Santa Claus. I don't know about us adults. Uh, I, I think it makes you believe that there is someone above watching over us. That's what I believe. Where are these koalas? There's one there. There's one up the tree. I feel like I have got a second chance and this time I will make the most of it and nothing's going to stop me. It's probably one Christmas gift that he won't forget, having seen it drop out of the sky and rescue him. He's a very lucky person. Next. Being a child, not knowing what to do, and then an adult not knowing what to do either.